Did you watch the recent Energy Tech Summit where Octopus Energy announced the uh, the uh, Cozy 10 heat pump? Well, I watched it with interest and there are a few things that just jumped out to me. Last year we introduced the Cozy 6 heat pump. It was designed for small homes. This winter we're now turning it up a notch with the new Cozy 10, a 10 kilowatt version powerful enough to heat mid-sized homes. Okay, really, I'm not sure about some of these things. I love what you're doing. I love what they talked about, uh, you know, integration and connectivity and automation. That's brilliant. But anyway, a, heat, a Cozy 6 is for small homes and a Cozy 10 is for mid-sized homes. Where did you get that information from? Because you've been fitting a lot of Cozy 6s. And I know in some cases you are fitting these 6 kilowatt heat pumps in homes that have a heat loss of below 3 kilowatts. And you're doing that because you don't have a smaller heat pump. So why are you not rolling out a Cozy 4 or a Cozy 3? And then you capture up so much more of the market. And uh, I don't know. I know that a Cozy 6 can modulate down somewhat, but you are going to end up with some cycling and hopefully not excessive cycling. Hopefully still going to be fine. A couple of starts per hour maximum and everything should work out fine. But I just want to show you some information of why I think this is wrong, why I think what Greg has said here is wrong. He says a Cozy 6 is for small homes, a Cozy 10 is for medium homes. And if you go on to heatpumps.org.uk, um, they ha this website has some good information, it has some poor information. And some of the poor information is this little rule of thumb here. It's ridiculous. So my house is a four bedroom, 140 square meter detached house built in 1996 no uh, uh, blown bead cavity wall insulation or super duper upgrades or anything we do have new glazing and we do ha i have topped up the loft insulation very cheap very easy we've also got honking great extension out the back i've put an insulated roof on but it's still got masses of glazing on three sides my heat loss for my four bedroom house that's nearly 30 years old is 5.8 kilowatts if you calculate it through using the forms or using heat punk it comes out pretty much the same I had two professional heat loss surveys and i did my own diy one using two different methods always came out in that kind of ballpark if i adjust the air change rate then i get it closer to five kilowatts well guess what over the last year and the last winter when it got really, really cold, when we had that cold snap, we were well below our design temperature for over 24 hours. We never put more than five kilowatts of heat into our property. No way near. Actually, we were kind of closer to four kilowatts. So although we fitted a seven kilowatt valent Aerotherm Plus, I could have got away with a five quite easily. I don't consider our house to be really well insulated, but I don't I don't uh, think it's poorly insulated either. I think we probably we're somewhere in the middle of this. And uh, is my house a small house or a medium sized house? As Greg is referring to, a six, a cozy six is for a small house. A cozy ten is for a mid sized house. Well, it's all relative compared to the palace that Greg lives in. Of course, my house is a small house, and the cozy six would be the perfect size. But for most people, you'd consider a 140 square meter, four bed detached as a medium size house. I don't think a 10 kilowatt would be great. That would be double what I would actually need. Let's look at some actual data. I want to go back a few pages here. On heatpumpmonitor.org, they've got this really great tool. Um, where's... Here we go. Let's just start with this one because this one goes to show a few things. So these blue data points are 24-hour data points and they show how much heat was put into the building over a 24-hour period, okay? If you hover over the point, we can actually look at it and we can see, ah, the outside temperature average was almost minus one degree and they kept the room temperature at 20 degrees and these these averages over a 24-hour period so they kept the host house nice and warm while it was pretty cool outside and they inputted 2.9 kilowatts of heat over that 24-hour period this includes the heat that's going into the hot water cylinder as well so um what does this show us you can see these lines up here the the gray one at the bottom is the actual calculated heat loss and then you can see the heat pump and the badge capacity and stuff they've put in the smallest mitsubishi eco down a five kilowatt it's still a little bit oversized not a problem really 
not excessively oversized that gives you a bit of headroom and if you do have an extra large heat pump then you can recharge your hot water cylinder quicker as long as the hot water cylinder has got a big enough coil that it can absorb that extra energy from a bigger heat pump otherwise um you can you can see down here calculated heat loss and then the heat pump data sheet and then you can see that the actual heat demand and actual not just uh, theoretical calculations on a form but actually real world measurements there's plenty to look at on heat pump monitor i'm not going to spend all day here i think that these two are from tristan and glenn the guys who run heat pump monitor and open energy monitor um brilliant guys they're doing phenomenal work over there but a lot of their work goes to show that heat pumps are oversized a lot of them on here they're oversized by a small amount but i think that's because the sample on heat pump monitor is quite small it's not representative of most heat pumps most of the people who are putting them on here are the really like over the top incredible installers who want to know their own data or really geeky um homeowners who really want to take control and are control freaks as well so i don't know that this is just not the normal market anyway this also goes to show that the samsung that glenn has fitted in his own house has a calculated heat loss of four kilowatts the data sheet on uh, sorry the home has a calculated heat loss loss of four kilowatts on the data sheet this heat pump can do 4.7 but you can see he's still not it ever got up to that four kilowatts but once again very well sized very very close um it things get a lot worse when you start to look at the broader range of heat pumps that are installed this one for example the heat loss was calculated at a 6.6 .6 kilowatt but they fitted a 10 kilowatt heat pump in a 6.6 .6 heat loss but it gets even worse than that because you can see that they are only ever inputting a maximum of 3.3 3.4 kilowatts so a third of the rated output of this grant heat pump is actually being used and this is a bad offender because the 10 kilowatt grant isn't just badged as 10 kilowatt it actually will output that 10 kilowatts as well the heat loss is over the top and then they've gone overboard again with upsizing another uh, up to a much bigger heat pump when really we can see that a four kilowatt heat pump or a five kilowatt heat pump five kilowatt heat pump would leave you ample headroom they could have halved the size of this heat pump unfortunately that is fairly representative and fairly typical this is a seven kilowatt valent aerotherm plus and we are once again we're seeing a very very similar thing um, you can spend all the time and you can go you can wander through all these pages i'm not going to take up more time in this video i've already taken up loads um, you can also see this the on the main page you can see the different sizes of heat pumps see how many of these five kilowatt heat pumps a lot of these uh, installers have got their hands tied because you can't buy a, a monoblock heat pump that's smaller than the five kilowatt in many cases and a lot of the ones that are badged as 3.5 kilowatt we got one on it yeah valent aerotherm plus 3.5 kilowatt it's physically the same unit as the five kilowatt it's just software limited and we see that with so many heat pumps so we would like to see octopus energy we would like to see a four kilowatt cozy instead of rolling out a 10 kilowatt cozy because the market is already flooded with big heat pumps we don't need any more of them this goes to show that uh, cycling is normal short cycling isn't great but this is like this is just so perfect this is with an outside temperature three degrees here and getting warmer and you can see that that cycle it was from 6 a.m up to way past 10 a.m so we've got hours and hours and hours on one cycle this is a well-sized heat pump unfortunately not all of the heat pumps on heat pump monitor look like this and every time you cycle you are leaving some efficiency on the table but you know you do need headroom for those colder days but this is a colder day if you then look in milder weather you will see a lot more frequent cycling and those shoulder months are where you're really going to suffer with a grossly oversized heat pump anyway i've waffled on for far too long 
What's the conclusion? As always, the conclusion is that most of you aren't subscribed to the channel. If you've watched it this far, you should do that. You should definitely give us a thumbs up, like this video, comment on it. It will help the algorithm push it to more people so we can spread the message of heat pumps. I'm enthusiastic about the future. I think there's a bumpy ride still ahead of us as a lot of things get ironed out. And I would have loved to see a Cozy 4. Maybe it's in the future. Maybe they haven't quite uh, got to that point yet. But Greg, if you're listening, if someone's passing this on to you, Cozy 10 is great, but there's so many smaller properties that need smaller heat pumps. And you guys have that data. The more Cozy 6s you put into people's homes, the more of that data you guys will be seeing behind the scenes that your Cozy 6s are already oversized. We don't need Cozy 10s on top of that. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.